One of the things that we consistently underestimate in climate change is the urgency, because we're used to thinking about climate change as being a slow-moving process. However, there is an urgency here, because the window of being able to change the course is very, very narrow. What Paris has done is it has established a very clear direction and a timeline. 195 countries unanimously agreed to the next 50 years, if you will, at least 50 years of their development. It is going to be a development that increases both the efficiency and the effectiveness of the carbon content of every unit of GDP. The beauty of Paris, I think, is that it is built on enlightened national interest, all of which are the result of a very, very detailed and rigorous analysis inside their own national boundaries of what is politically, technically, financially possible. So we're working here with a very, very powerful driver of change, which is the self-interest of each country. I think the most, uh, the most pressing uh, factor here is to align incentives, technology, finance and policy. They cannot continue to work against each other. We need to align all three because those are the three that will determine the power of the market to take us forward. There is no doubt that the private sector is going to play a huge role. What governments have done in Paris is they have decided what the direction of travel is going to be. In this case, it's the private sector that has the technology, the capital, of the know-how, the ingenuity to actually get us there. So one cannot operate without the other. And if there is one fundamental lesson from Paris is this has got to be a collaboration between private and public.